of peace we gather here now Oh Lord, please make these days of ours On this earth filled with peace Peace for peace Peace for TV, peace for the solution for humanity Because of politics, you kill each other. Because of politics, you fight with each other. You hate each other. This is the politics of Shaitan. His duty is to create hatred among us so that we fight with each other. Islam is a way of life. It is very wrong for Muslims to say that Islam and politics cannot mix, cannot be together because Islam is a way of life. Without Islam, there is no clean politics. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Isa Washington, and here to open this session of National Islamic Conference on Peace. I would like to now invite to the stage Sheikh Hussein Yi. Sheikh Hussein Yi of Malaysia, would you please take the stage? <laughs> Sheikh Hussein Yi is the president of Al Khadam organization in Malaysia. He is a Malaysian national of Chinese descent. Although born into a Buddhist family, he embraced Islam at the age of 18 in 1968. He pursued further studies at the Islamic Studies University of Medina in Saudi Arabia, majoring in Hadith. After graduating in 1978, he joined the Muslim Welfare Organization, Perkin, in Malaysia, which focuses on the well-being of the new converts to Islam. Later, he seconded as director of the Islamic Center in Hong Kong. With his vast experience in Islamic social welfare and da'wah work, he founded al Khadim with a group of volunteers in 1984. He also studied under one of the great scholars of Hadith of this time, Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin Albani. Today, Ustaz Muhammad Hussein Yi is a well-known personality in the Islamic world. He gives regular lectures in the Asia-Pacific region and conducts a lot of summer camps in the UK and Europe under the invitation of local and international organizations. And with no further delay, ladies and gentlemen, Ustaz Hussein Yi on the topic of Islam and politics. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Hussain. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru. Wa na'unzu billahi min shururi anfusina. Wa sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu falamudillalah. Wa man yudlil falahadiyalah. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله may the peace of Allah سبحانه وتعالى upon all of us who are present in this hall we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى for all his bounties his ni'mah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to guide all of us to the right path. And we always ask Allah to help us to overcome our weaknesses that we have within ourselves, the weaknesses of our heart. And we ask Allah to help us to make sure whatever deeds that we engage in our daily life is a deeds that Allah is pleased with. It is our duty as fellow Muslim and people who believe in one God to always declare and bear witness there is none worthy to worship except Allah alone 
because he is the only creator of all things and the sender of all prophets from Adam to Noah to Abraham to Moses to Jesus and to Prophet Muhammad peace of Allah be upon all of them Amin fellow brother and sister in Islam firstly before I share with you about Islam and politics I would like to inform all of you the important for you to work together as one ummah it is a blessing from Allah that you are able to attend this Islamic conference organized by IIF you have seen what the IIS have done to our children last night they train a lot of the young children to become our double now this is a good sign if you want your children to grow up to carry the mission of Islam you should enroll them in this school in IIS because what we need at the end of our life is a righteous child righteous children waladan salih yad'u lahu because their prayer will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even after we pass away or after we depart from this dunya it is a great honor for all of us to be with you we all are gathered together for the sake of Allah and we are going to depart for the sake of Allah by doing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower us in his shade in a day of judgment where there is no other shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are few things that I like to share with all the brother and sister before we talk about Islam and politics I'm going to come from a different approach because we know when you talk about politics you are talking about power you are talking about authority you are talking about leadership before we come to the area I like all the brothers please I want you to do one thing for me and I will tell you what you will get by doing that after this I want all the brothers and all the sisters who are together can you hold hand hold your hand together please do it for the sake of Allah we have been coming here sitting next to each other we don't even know each other sometimes we are a stranger and it is very bad for you to come in together in this hall sitting next to each other and you are still a stranger Alhamdulillah all the frontliner they have started to hold the hand there are some people who are not used to holding hand yet but you have nothing to be ashamed of brother it's good for you it's good for you please raise up your hand after you're holding your hand raise up your hand you say Allah Akbar now you put down your hand now you say to your friend starting from the right from your right say to him assalamu alaikum tell him I love you for the sake of Allah and now to the left now give salam to the left and tell him I love you for the sake of Allah alhamdulillah may Allah love all of us Amin Islam is about love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam love us more than we love ourselves every day he never forget to pray for us even he don't live in our time but he have prayed to Allah may Allah bless and guide all of us here and the Prophet said when you love somebody say to him tell her I love you why because when you said I love you for the sake of Allah and then we if somebody said to me brother Hussaini I love you for the sake of Allah I will say to them Habbakallah allazi habbaktani li ajlik may Allah love you my brother may Allah love you more my sister because when you say you love me for the sake of Allah Allah has loved me because of your word and now I'm praying that Allah may love you back before we got married we always love each other every second I love you I love you I love you you love me I love you before married 
the man always say to the girl, I love you, my darling, my sweetheart, yeah, my diamond, my moon, my sun, anything you can say. After marry, <laughs> nothing come from your mouth. Anymore. Now your wife is telling you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Brother and sister, when you love somebody, please express your love to them. Nothing to be ashamed of. I love all of you. I have nothing to be ashamed of for the sake of Allah. Why we must love each other? Because we are like a big family. The Prophet have reminded us again and again, قَلُّكُمْ مِنْ آدَمْ وَآدَمْ مِنْ تُرَاب The Prophet said, all of you are children of Adam. And Adam is from clay. He told us, we are no stranger. Whether you are white or colored, yellow, brown, we are all children of Adam. Male, female, all are children of Adam. So you should love each other like how you love your own sibling, your own brother and sister. This is the spirit of Islam. Islam is here to teach us to love everybody so that the Creator Allah will love us. Now when you love everyone, there's peace. There's no more enemy among you. You don't have to fight for leadership anymore. Allah sent the Prophet not to fight for power. Power belongs to Allah. Allah have informed us that all the kingdom and power belong to Allah Almighty. Don't belong to you, don't belong to me. Don't belong to the king, don't belong to the president or the prime minister. It belongs to Allah. He gave the kingdom to whoever he wish. When Allah gives you the authority to be a leader, to have power, it's not for you to misuse the authority. Whoever misuse the authority and the authority and the power of Allah, Allah will take back the authority from him. You have witnessed in your time how many leaders how many presidents, how many prime ministers is facing a lot of problems that they got to resign. Some of them got to be exiled, got to go out from their own country. Now what I'm going to share with you is, we must understand what is our mission here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us about the mission of all his messenger. That he was... He sent all the messenger, the prophet, not to fight for power, not to fight for leadership, but to serve mankind, to become savior. وَلَقَدْ بَأَسْنَ فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُلُ اللَّهُ وَاجْتَنِبُ التَّغُودِ Indeed, we, Allah, have sent to every nation a messenger. A prophet and you know who is the prophet they are just like you and me normal men simple men not incredible men not spider-man and not superman but Allah said to Prophet Muhammad say to them innama ana annama ilahukum ilahu wahid. O Muhammad said to all the people you are a human like them so we do not worship him Neither we say he's a child of God, he's a son of God. But we say he is a human and the servant and the prophet of Allah. Allah sent to all nations a prophet, a messenger, to remind them, to call them, to save them, to free them from committing shirk and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why Allah sent the prophet to free us from shirk? Because Allah said, وَمَنْ يُشْرِقْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Allah said, whoever die in a state that he make shirk with Allah, he or she commit shirk, associate with Allah with any kind of form. 
I Allah because paradise jannah belong to Allah he is the keeper he is the owner maliki yawmiddin he said I forbid him I make jannah haram for them the prophet is very concerned about our affairs every day when he open his eye he think of this ummah how can he save us how can he free us from shirk every night before he go to bed he keep on praying to Allah in the daytime he do da'wah night time he make dua how many of us who are the follower of Prophet Muhammad who are the follower of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, make da'wah in the daytime and make dua in the night we are still talking about politic what have politic done to us what benefit do you have do you get in politics brothers and sisters a wise person a person who understand what is politic you look in this hadith the prophet said kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyate every one of you is a leader every one of us is a politician you are a leader for yourself you got to lead your own life nobody can force you to do this or do that you got to decide what you want to do the same go to the sister every one of us is a leader to ourselves the minimum that you must do is to lead yourself make sure that you worship Allah and you do not commit any shirk if you can lead yourself you don't think about leading others if you fail to lead yourself to control yourself you don't think of and never dream of controlling other people you will fail leadership start from ourselves and from our family when you are a father you are the leader when you are a husband you are a leader in your household I give you one simple example if you said that you are a leader to yourself of course you are the leader you are the one who decide where you want to go whether you come to this conference or not it's up to you to decide whether you want to worship Allah or not it's up to you whether you want to drink beer or whiskey or not it's up to you whether you want to gamble or not it's up to you nobody force you you want to destroy yourself it's up to you you want to save yourself welcome and all of us who are here now is going to look within ourselves because we want to be a leader to ourselves because the prophet said Allah is going to ask all of us about our leadership what have you done to yourself have you saved yourself from hellfire from the anger of Allah have you saved yourself from committing shirk khurafat bidah have you stayed away from all kind of drug that may destroy you you got to ask yourself you cannot say what can I do I have no power how can you say that what can you do you think the government can help you if you don't help yourself do you think the government going to send a policeman and come and open your mouth and force you to eat it's up to you you go to the doctor I'm sick the doctor okay after that the, the, this is some medication take it back but you don't want to eat the medication after one week you come and see the doctor again you know I came to see you last one week I'm still sick they say, have you taken the medicine no the doctor cannot force you you got to decide you want to take medication or not you cannot blame anybody except yourself brothers now when you talk about leadership we know what is Islam Islam is a way of life Islam is not just praying fasting zikir but it's a way of life it is very wrong for Muslim to say that Islam and politics cannot mix cannot be together because Islam is a way of life without Islam there is no clean politics because before Islam everybody is involved in politics among the tribe in Mecca they got 365 idols statue surrounded Kaaba one statue represents one tribe and everybody is doing politicking 
Islam came not to fight for power. Call all of them, let us worship one God. You can be a leader, you can lead your own people. I'm not here to be a leader. I'm here to call you to worship one Allah, one God. And accept me as the messenger of Allah. You carry on with your leadership. Alhamdulillah, because the Muslim leader, number one Muslim leader is Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, And it's been proven in the history. And second is Abu Bakr. Third is Omar, Osman Ali. All of them until today, until today we remember them. We read about their history. We love them. Why? Because they are real politicians. They are leaders who serve the nation. They are leaders who serve their people. They work for the people, not the people work for them. They didn't buy. They didn't do politics by money, no. They are worried to be a leader because they are worried it's a trust from Allah, it's an amana. And Allah is going to question us about what He entrusts you. That is why the Prophet always remind us, number one, what Allah have reminded him, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ خُنَفَاءَ أَوْ يُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُ الزَّكَةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَ You are not commanded by Allah except to worship Him alone. مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ You must be sincere in whatever you do. Sincere to yourself. Sincere to your wife, to your children, to your fellow men, to your neighbor, to your leader. It is not easy to be a leader, brothers and sisters. It is better for us to be a follower. Because Allah loves you more than you become a leader. Because the leader has responsibility. See how our Prophet وسلم. He is a great leader. But how do he live? How big is his house compared with the house that we are staying in? And when Prophet Muhammad passed away, what he left for himself and his family? Nothing. Nothing he left except Al-Quran and his teaching. For what? To save people, not to corrupt people. When you talk about material, when you talk about money, dollars and sand, a lot of people have dollar, no common sense. Because of politics, you kill each other. Because of politics, you fight with each other. You hate each other. This is what happened to the world today. Because of politics. I don't care whether he is my friend. Once upon a time, yeah, we are friends. But now because we are from different party, we are no more friends. We are enemy. Sometimes in a Muslim family, you have the son follow this party, the father follow another party. Now they have politics within the family. And sometimes the husband and wife go different way. Can you imagine what politics have done to us? Destroy the unity of fellow mankind. Destroy the family yeah. unit. Everybody become enemy because of politics. Now this is not the Islamic politics. This is the politics of shaitan. His duty is to create hatred among us so that we fight with each other. We envy each other. We hate each other. What I'm going to share with the brother and sister today, we know that Islam is a deen. In the deen of Allah, Islam is a deen. And Allah used this word deen many, many times. Maliki yawmit deen. Allah used deen. Lakum dinukum waliya din. Din. What do you understand about this din? And then in the hadith, Rasulullah said, Adinu nasiha. The religion of Islam is based on good advice, good reminder. Like all the Prophet was sent to remind us about what? About Allah who created us. About what? About the do and don't. About paradise and hell. So that we always are aware and are alert where we want to go. The companion of the Prophet asked the Prophet. When the Prophet said, They asked, religion is good advice. 
They ask, advise who? Who are we going to advise? Oh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Fakala lillah. He replied, "You advise for the sake of Allah. When you want to remind somebody, when you want to give somebody an advice, you must do it sincerely from your heart. Lillahi taala. Not to show off. Not to boast that you know better than him. No." Because I love you, my brother. Because I love you, my sister. When I see something is not right, it's my duty to remind you, to advise you, not to condemn you, not to pass judgment to you, not to execute you. But because I love you, I'm here to save you. I got to remind you. I'm here to remind you. But for the sake of Allah, wali kita be. You see what the Prophet said. When you want to advise a person, remind a person about something that is good, you must. Advise him based on the guidance of the book, not because you think it's right, because Allah said it's right, not because you think it's wrong, but Allah said it's wrong. This is very important. Allah give us guidance. Don't just say that you are wrong because I don't like you to do this. No, whatever I dislike, maybe Allah like. Whatever I like, maybe Allah dislike. So when you want to advise anybody, you advise them based on the book of Allah. Wali Rasulih and follow the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When you advise somebody, you have no right to humiliate him. You have no right to belittle him. You must honor him, respect him, and then you advise him. Is that easy, brother? Do you think it's easier for you to accept any kind of advice from your friend when they talk to you nicely, respect you, and then they advise you, or they just come to you? Hey, my brother, you are doing something haram. You're going to hell. What do you think? You think that is better? Or you said, oh, "Brother, how are you today? Have you have your lunch? Masha Allah, you are so good. No, I love you for the sake of Allah." You cool down him too. Make him cool down. The brother, I have something to remind you. I hope you don't mind. You talk to him nicely, with the best approach, bil hikmah. Insha Allah, they will listen to you. And then the Prophet said, "Wali a immatil muslimin wa ammatihim." Islamic advice is not only among you and me as fellow citizen, no, but also between we and our leader. If you see a Muslim leader is not correct, it is your duty, my duty, to try to talk to him. It's not easy to meet the leaders. Our leader today is not like Omar ibn Khattab. You know when Omar ibn Khattab became the leader, the great leader of Muslim, two greatest power, the most powerful nation, Rome and Persia, fall in the time of Omar. You know how he lived, brother and sister. You know the door of Omar is made of cloth. It's a cloth. There is no iron. There is no wooden door. It's just a cloth. Cover his door. You don't need to use lock. No alarm. No security. Just a piece of cloth cover the door of the house of Omar. Because the Muslim leader was so peaceful, they fear nobody because they are so just to everyone. They are fair. They are just, and people love the leaders. Today, you know what kind of leader we all have. It's so difficult to see them. Each time you want to go and see them, you got to go through from one yeah, section to another section, from one door to another door. At the end of the day, he is not inside; he is outside already. It is so difficult for you to meet leaders today. Not like the time of the Prophet, the time of the great Caliph, the leader of the Ummah. Today, politics is very different. They don't care. And we know that the Prophet have remind us again and again. The Prophet said, "Al Mu'min, lil Mu'min, kal bunyani ya shuddu ba'duhu ba'da." A believer with respect to another believer is like a building. One part strengthen and reinforce the other. We are together like a big family. Al Muslim akul Muslim la yaslimu, wa la yaxzulu, wa la yahqiru. A Muslim is a veteran brother to another Muslim. He does not wrong him, forsake him, or scorn him. Even you want to get involved in politics, but you must honor, respect your fellow brother. 
whether he is with you or he is not with you he is still your brother you got to be fair to them so Islamic politic is not like the normal politic today politic is so corrupted so unclean they call money politic they buy leadership they buy power they are all power crazy we are not power crazy we are crazy to call people to Islam we are crazy to do good thing but not crazy to fight with each other for the sake of leadership but if we fail if we fail to lead ourselves don't ever dream to be a leader if you fail to control yourself I just give you an example if you fail to abstain from smoking then how can you stop other people from smoking how can you build a healthy society do you know smoking is bad for your health you are destroying yourself you are destroying your wife your children the third party who do not smoke have you ever asked your wife do you like smoking do you love me when I smoke sisters please help me do you like your husband to smoke say it loud do you like your husband to smoke they don't hear you say it again do you like your husband to smoke listen carefully brother they said no I don't say that they say no I didn't say it I just asked them because you you hardly ask them that is their right when you never ask them anything anymore because you are the big boss yeah. and you always believe the boss is always right who say that did Allah say the boss is always right no nobody is perfect that's why the prophet said nasiha. religion is good advice and fellow sister please if you love your husband if they are doing something wrong don't keep quiet please don't keep quiet for the sake of Allah speak up tell your husband I love you my habibi my darling my sweetheart why before that you always said my darling my sweet now you don't call him sweetheart anymore or you have another sweetheart that we do not know and Allah know best of course we know that our sister have sacrificed more than their husband the brothers they work day and night to serve us to please us in the same time to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you see the beauty of the teaching of Islam the Prophet said Man radda an irdi aqihi radda Allahu an wajhihi nar yawm al qiyamah whoever defend his brother's honor or the sister honor will have Allah turn his face away from the hellfire on the day of resurrection you see the political point of Islam is he said you are here to save you are here to save the person to guide the person not to destroy if you know that he's doing something wrong honor him protect him help him not to expose his weakness because Allah do not like anybody who expose the weakness of another person then Allah will expose our own bad deeds fellow brother and sister in Islam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam remind us again Inna dima'akum wa amwalakum wa a'aradakum haramun alaykum Whether you are a politician or you are not a politician Whether you are in power or not in power You must honor your fellow Muslim Verily it is forbidden, haram for you to transgress against your brothers Life, wealth and honor And this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remind us the Prophet ﷺ to the extent remind us to have always good thoughts, good feeling. Stay away from suspicion, for suspicion is the false. Most of the suspicion is the false of speech. Every word come up from suspicious feeling, you cannot accept it. And in the same time, the Prophet ﷺ remind us how to become a good Muslim how to help each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because at the end of the day we are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet said man nafasa an mu'minin qurbatun min qurbin dunya 
nafasallahu anhu qurbatan min qurbil yaumil qiyamah whoever rescue a muslim from a distress of the distress of this world allah will rescue him from a distress on the day of resurrection and the prophet continue by his saying the meaning of the hadith of the prophet for whoever makes thing easy for one in hardship allah will make this world and the hereafter easy for him whoever conceal the fault the weakness of a brother muslim or sister muslim allah will conceal his fault his fault in this world and the hereafter allah assist help a slave as long as the slave help his fellow brothers this is the beauty of islam teaching us to always be constructive to build not to destroy to save not to execute to love not to hate then if you have all these good quality in you inshallah you can be a good leader you don't have to fight to be a leadership allah will give you the leadership the prophet never fight for a leadership allah appointed him to be a leader of his ummah abu bakar never fight for leadership but allah appointed him and all the companion agreed that he should be the leader because he is the best example after the prophet that's why he got the title as siddiq we have abu bakar today but not siddiq abu bakar al-kazzab the liar abu bakar before abu bakar as-siddiq we have omar there are so many omar here but not omar al-khattab in the time of the prophet the prophet said, when omar walked in one street all the shaitan who stay in that street will run away this is how strong the iman of omar in al-khattab al-faruq if omar today walk in that street he will be corrupted in that street this is the, the new omar you have beautiful name but you have bad character the same the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam remind us about one important thing brother and to share with you ya ma'shara man amana bi lisanihi wa lam yadkhul al-iman fi qalbihi la takhtabu al-muslimin wa la tattabi'u awratihim fa innahu man yattabi awrata aqil al-muslim yattabi Allah awratahu and Allah continue by saying yafdahu walau kana fi khawfil bayti aw fi jawfil bayti the prophet said all people who believe with their tongues we all believe because we say we believe but in whose heart faith has not entered but not in our heart we believe that all muslim is like a big family we said i'm your muslim brother i'm your muslim sister but you don't even honor and respect each other you don't even love each other you don't even give salam to each other you don't even say to them my brother i love you for the sake of allah but alhamdulillah you have done that today i hope that you carry on with this spirit when you see your fellow muslims salam alaikum you know they are doing something good i love you for the sake of allah brother i love you for the sake of allah sisters do that allah is going to love you and the prophet said there are a lot of people who say and claim that they are believer but the faith is not in their heart yet and the prophet said do not bet by the muslim and do not seek their private matter don't go into the privacy of fellow muslim maybe your leader is not so good he's a corrupted leader neither are you you are not that good too you are also corrupted but you are not supposed to go into their privacy and try to expose him to the public is haram is haram when you see a leader who is not correct you know his weaknesses you don't even approach him or write a letter to him or at least pray for him you can't do anything who are we to see the minister who are we to talk to our leader but at least you can ask our oh allah give guidance to my leader give guidance to this prime minister of this country guide him so that he will guide us in the way you want us to be guided we don't even pray to allah how can you become a good ummah when you do not feel for each other where the prophet said do not bet by the muslim 
and do not seek their private matter whoever seek the private matter of his brother muslim allah will follow up his private matter and expose it even if it is in the innermost portion of his house it's very dangerous do you think that you are a smart politician by exposing the weakness of another politician you are not smart brother you are opening your weakness to the public and in the day of judgment Allah is going to expose all your weakness but if you are a good person if you know that that leader is not good you are better work for it you don't have to buy you don't have to buy water you work for it show that you are there to serve the community when the community know that you are sincere you are a good leader inshallah the time will come they will work for you they want you to be their leader like the prophet like abu bakar like omar like osman everybody love them to be the leader and nobody want to fight with each other one day become a leader everybody will serve them try the best to serve them to be loyal to them because that is the duty of the ummah when you have a leader don't fight to be another leader just honor him and he is not going to live long he will go down then there will be a replacement with your patience with your prayer may Allah help you may Allah help all Muslim leader so there is no fight against fellow Muslim anymore because we are not here to fight with each other we are here to complement each other to share with each other to work together as one ummah and to free our nation from shirk a good politician is a politician who think about your future not only your future 10 years coming or 20 years in the future but your future in life after death he is here to save you from Allah's punishment he is here to tell you please my nation free yourself from shirk i have seen a lot of muslim in this country in my short stay a lot of our children wearing tamima you know what is tamima brother a kind of black string they tie around their wrist maybe they wear some talisman here all this is shirk all this is shirk you don't rely on allah anymore you rely on all these things how can you be a good example and be a leader you have failed yourself you allow yourself to commit shirk so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength and the hidayah to be a good politician starting from ourselves by following the way of allah the way of prophet you save yourself from all the problem and you start from your family you want to establish a family following quran and sunnah you are the leader in your house so you want to lead them according to the principle of islam and then if you're the leader of the community you want to lead them according to what allah want you to do because the divine law is for everybody if you are a boss in a company you must make sure that all your staff is being led by the lead by the islamic teaching and following the way of the prophet and if you are a minister please don't forget to keep on leading people based on the guidance of allah and the sunnah of the prophet inshallah you don't have to worry about your leadership allah will protect you allah will safeguard you when allah protect us nobody can destroy us nobody can sabotage us this is what we believe Allahumma malik al mulki tu'til mulka man tasha wa tanzi'u al mulka mim man tasha wa tu'izzu man tasha wa tuzillu man tasha bi yadika al khairu innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir i repeat again i end my speech with this ayah say o oh muhammad remind the people all the kingdom and the power belong to allah he give to those he please and he will take it back from whom he please or whomever he like and he will honor whoever honor his religion and he is going to humiliate people who humiliate his religion remember it's in the hand of allah all the power all the goodness belong to him so if you want to be a good politician inshallah be a good followers of islam be obedient to allah be obedient to the prophet inshallah whoever is under your leadership will be obedient to you وَبِاللَّهِ تَوْفِيقِ وَلَا أَخْرَى دَعْوَانَا وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وزاك الله خير 
We will begin answering these questions on the topic of Islam and politics. And to do so, with the time we have, we would like everyone to follow these guidelines for the questions and answers. Questions asked should be on the topic. That's number one. Number two, questions not relevant to the topic, including any general questions on the religion, will not be allowed. Kindly state your question briefly and to the point. Please, no statements. Only one question at a time may be asked. For your second question, you will have to go to the back of the line and wait your second chance to speak. Non-Muslims, both male and female, will be given preference to ask questions. If you need to get to the microphone, please make sure you get to a volunteer and they will assist you. There are three mics which we have arranged around the auditorium. The first one is here, the second in the back for the males, and one for the sisters in the front. If you don't want to use the microphone, maybe you're a little shy, you may write your question and get it to any one of the volunteers, but questions which are written will be given second preference. Kindly state your name and your profession before you start your question, and remember, please have your questions on the topic of Islam and politics. The gentleman in the front, would you please begin? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Muhammad Ismail from Kerala State. I'm a builder as well as a stockbroker. I love you so much, Brother Lee, for the sake of Allah. My question is, whether is it permissible in the religion to work or to strive for an establishment of an Islamic state in our places, respective places? Please come in. Allah Akbar. Uh, before I answer, I would like to call if the, my double is here. Uh, the son Sa'ad Nadim Siddiqui. Where is Sa'ad Nadim Siddiqui? Yeah, he is walking up here now. Can you please come up and... <laughs> Siddiqui, sit there. This is my double. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless this son. We hope to have children like them. Now, who are able to act like all the da'i, the scholar. We have a beautiful... Uh, performance last night and he is representing me so that's why I want all of you to know who is Sa'ad Nadim Siddiqui you're going to stay there okay if I cannot answer you must help me <laughs> now the brother was asking a very important question to be realistic if you're staying in this country is it our responsibility to strive to establish Islamic State our responsibility is to call people to the religion of Allah when they become Muslim, they carry on with their leadership. That's all. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. That's our responsibility. We are not here to be a politician. We are here to be a savior. To call people to Islam. When they become Muslim, let them carry on their responsibility. You understand, brother? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So don't worry about that. Jazakallah. Alhamdulillah. Come here in the back, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ludovic Bonilla. I am traveling in India. And uh, my question is, well, you, you said that uh, a good uh, politic, polit leader on, in politics uh, to, has to think about the future of the, the nation, not only 10 years, but the, in the year after. Does it mean that the, in Islam, the Politic leader has to be a religious leader. Can Brother Isa help me? Could you please restate the question one time, please? My question is, in Islam, uh, the politic leader has to be um, a religious leader? Oh, yeah, if brother Isa can shoot. In Islam, any politician must he become a Muslim polity. Is that what you are trying? Must he become a Muslim? No, no, no. A, a, a leader. Not, not only a Muslim, a leader, the leader of, the, of all the Muslims. Any leaders? Any leaders? No, no, no. Uh, in Islam, I mean that uh, in Islam, I guess that uh, uh, the politician in Islamic uh, Sharia are Muslim. So they lead the nation, uh, the Ummah. But um, they, my question is uh, if they have to be also a religious leader. Not only politics, but about religion. If I'm not wrong, you are trying to ask us that uh, a Muslim politician, he can be a religious leader, and in the same time, 
he can be a politician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Of course, we hope that all leader are believers because if they are believers, insha Allah, they always fear Allah. They fear that they will Allah will punish them if they do not yeah, lead His people in the way that Allah want them to lead. Because if the leader is corrupted, he fail his people. But if a person, a leader who remember Allah, now I just show you example. Allah said, "Wala takunu kalazin na sulaf ansahum, ulaika humul fasiqun." Don't be like the people who, when they have power and authority, they forget Allah. When they forget Allah, Allah make them forget themselves, and the people will forget them. Of course, the best leader is a leader who believe in Allah. Because when you believe in Allah, you dare not yeah, betray your people. You are there to be very just, very fair to the people because you know that Allah is going to take everything that you do into account. But when you don't believe in Allah, then you can do anything you like. Like today's, most of the leaders don't believe in Allah. That's why they do anything they like. But when a person who believes in Allah, they will try their best to lead the nation to what Allah like them to do. And then when you do what Allah wants you to do, Allah is going to bless the country and bless the people. Now, We'll take a question from the sister side. Sister, please state your name and profession. Assalamu alaikum, brother. I'm Alia Khan and I'm a student of psychology. Wa alaikum salam. Brother, what I want to ask is, can a Muslim woman enter politics? And if not, what is her role in politics? Can a Muslim woman enter politics? When there is no man, then you can be, enter politics. But now there is still a lot of men. So leave it to the men. But you are always, yeah, all women is always a born politician. <laughs> yeah, you are a politician. You don't have to enter into any politics anymore. You start from home. You are the Ministry of Home Affairs. <laughs> yeah, so you don't have to worry about that. You take care of the family, take care of the future generation, because the future generation is going to be the future leader. Okay, sis? Alhamdulillah. Thank you. So what is happening outside, don't let the men corrupt you. Don't let the men corrupt you, sister. You better stay put, be happy with what you are. Allah has put you in a very important post. You are the Ministry of Home Affairs. You know that no politician outside can be a successful politician without the woman behind them. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah help you, sis, inshallah. Yeah? Just pray for the man politician. When there is no man, then we have no choice. The woman got to come out. Yeah. Naam. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. At the moment, in the most of the Muslim countries, there are kings and dictators where the freedom of an individual is completely denied. And as per the history, you know what the kings and dictator does. Yeah. Do the Muslims still have to follow those kings and declare that? Uh, what should we do? What should we do? Allahu Akbar Allah. It's a very critical question. We have kings. Allah know this is going to happen. The Prophet have foreseen this. That's why the Prophet said, Allah in the day of judgment will call all the kings. He will say, Anal Malik, Aina Mulukular. I am the king. The only king belong to this king who belong to Allah, do not belong to us. But now human want to call themselves king. And they, when they become king, they are above law. And a lot of Muslim leaders today are dictatorship. What should we do? Our duty as a Muslim, number one, is to try to reach him in any way you can. If you have a first phone number or write a letter, anything, if you can't do it, at least, like what I said earlier, you pray for him. Just pray for him first. Of course, we cannot just follow them blindly. Whatever the Muslim leader wants us to do, it is against the Sharia, we cannot obey them. Because the Prophet said, La ta'atu makhluk fi ma'asyatillah. We cannot obey another human in doing something against Allah. 
But if they are not doing something against Allah, they have their own weaknesses, and whatever they command you that do not go against the Sharia, you can still be with them. You can still obey them as long as what they want you to do do not go against Allah and the Prophet. I know what is happening to the Muslim country today. We may protest, we may fight for it, one changes, but we need to have a lot of patience, brother. We do not know the leader that we want to replace, whether he is a better leader or not. Sometimes we think he is better. Every time we hope that the coming leader is a better leader, but after that, sometimes he also is corrupted. So what we must have, Islam taught us or teach us to be patient and do whatever you can yeah, to be a good citizen. And then show them that you are a better person. Maybe Allah will appoint us one day. Nothing is impossible. But do not corrupt the people. Do not try to influence other people to go against a Muslim leader. And no, nobody is perfect. Neither we are perfect. Always in our lifetime, we are, it's easy for us to judge a person. But it's not easy when we are there. So we ask Allah to help them with our patience. We hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open their heart and become a better leader. And we hope the king is not above law because Allah is going to deal with them separately in the day of judgment. We hope they become a good leader. If they want to call themselves king, be a good king. It's okay, inshallah. No. We'll take a question from the gentleman in the rear, please. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Asif and I'm in business. Well, over the last few days, uh, we have heard in anyone in your talks, you have mentioned that all Muslims should love peace, be loving, forgiving, and etc. And but doesn't Quran and Islam say about uh, uh, revenge and uh, agitations and protests? What do you have to say about it? In Islam, always promote peace. The first thing that Islam wants us to do to have peace. Now, if you cannot, yeah, cannot have peace, yeah, if you cannot. I mean, if you fight, you ask for peace and peace does not come to you. You just got to have a lot of patience. If you go back to the history of Islam, even in the time of the Prophet, they got to migrate. If they have to migrate, they have to migrate. If they are not safe to stay in this environment because people don't respect their right anymore. At that, that point of time, Allah wants the Muslim to migrate to a safer area. Not to fight with them. Because your duty is to call them to be good, to be just. But if they fail to be a good leader, and you know you've been oppressed, you got to make a migration. You see what the Prophet is showing us? He himself, if Allah gave him miracle, he can just ask Allah, Oh Allah, destroy all these people. He didn't do that. He can ask Allah. You remember the history when the Prophet went to Ta'if? After the death of his uncle, Abu Talib, and the death of his beloved wife, Khatija, to find... Uh, to try to get support uh, from his family in Ta'if. The people in Ta'if do not welcome him. They throw stone at him. They injured him. The angel who is taking care of these two mountains came to the Prophet and asked him permission for the angel to destroy the whole inhabitants of Ta'if. But the Prophet said, Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alham. Inni lam ub asla'anan walakinni bu'istu da'iyan wa rahmah. Allahumma di qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun I am not sent to bring destruction When people are not happy with me People don't accept me I just ask Allah Destroy them Replace them with a better nation No But he said I am being sent by Allah as a savior As a caller To bring mercy to mankind They go against me Because they do not know who am I Oh Allah give guidance to them With his patience Before he pass away the whole Ta'if become Muslim because of the prayer and the Prophet and the patient. So brother, that would be the best way. If you are trying to promote peace, people are not happy with it. Like the Prophet, he promote peace for you to respect each other, honor each other. People are not happy. But at last he will ask Allah for help. He know at the end of the day, Almighty Allah, the all-powerful, he only one can change. Yeah? We cannot change everything. So we got to have a lot of patience. You understand that, brother? I, I believe that you also have a lot of patience. And don't forget to pray for each other. Whoever that you are not happy with, 
you cannot help him to change ask Allah to open his heart and make him change inshallah at the end of the day everybody will be happy inshallah Assalamu alaikum we'll go to the sister side sister could you please state your name and profession Assalamu alaikum brother Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah, firstly, I take this opportunity to say that we all love you. Amen, amen. For the sake of Allah. And now my question is, um, it goes like this. Whenever you see anything wrong, you should stop it with your hands. If you can't, do that with your mouth. And if not, you at least curse it in your heart. And that is the lowest level of Iman. How can we apply this uh, same to the corrupt politicians? Should we follow this order or otherwise? Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. The Prophet ﷺ did remind us, Man ro'a minkum al-munkar fal yugayru bi yadi wa ilam tastati fa bi lisani wa ilam tastati fa bi qalbi the Prophet is telling us that if any one of you is confronted with something that is haram, something that is bad, not only bad for you, but bad for the nation, then you should try your level best. If you have the authority, you use your power, use your hand. If you don't have the authority, at least you speak out. Don't keep quiet. If that also is not possible, then at least deep in your heart, you hate what they are doing, you go against it. But in the same time, do not just hit and don't do anything. At least you pray again at the end of the day, pray. The Prophet don't like what the people who have been, um, who, what the mushrikeen yeah, have done to his follower, but he still keep on praying for Allah's help. Everybody cannot say that I totally have no authority. If you are a mother, you must ha know that you have authority in your house. You have the right to stop any form of haram thing entering the house. Even if your husband is bringing something haram, you have the right to stop it. Because Allah said, "Wal mu'minun wal mu'minat ba'duhum awliya uba ya'muruna bil ma'ruf yanhauna 'ani munkar." The Muslim believer, male and female, husband and wife, they are Ba'aduhum awliya uba. They are protector. They are helper. They complement each other. The same thing is, you want to do something wrong in the house, the husband have the right to stop you. Your children, if they want to bring something haram back home, you have the right to stop them. That is your right. That is your responsibility. You cannot say, "What can I do?" You want a policeman to come to the house and do that for you? You must have certain authority, certain dignity. I am the mother. The children must know who you are and you must show that you must exercise your authority in your house. That's your duty, sister. But if you can't, like your husband, maybe you're weak, you cannot stop him, but at least you talk to him. Talk to him, reason up to him. If you're so naive, you know that anything you say at home, you'll get a slap. You have a, you're so, you're so happy you got a man who do not love you. Why? You married a person who you don't love? Because it's been planned like that. It's not your choice. It's the family who decide. That means the family is not being judged to you. The family is not being fair to you. They should be very selective. Do not just pass their daughter to any man. Because the daughter is an amanah. You cannot just give your daughter to just any man who have no iman and they are going to destroy your children. So if you have certain authority, you must do that. If you can't do it, the least that you can do is with your heart, yes. But at least you also pray, Oh Allah, help me to strengthen my iman and also increase my patience to face this trial. And then, Oh Allah, open the heart of this wrongdoer. You try your level best, brother and sister. You do not know how powerful your du'a is sometimes. We forget the power of du'a. We forget that. And the Prophet remind us, The Prophet said, A prayer from a fellow Muslim brother to another Muslim brother or sister, without they knowing that we are praying for them, without they ask us to pray for them, come from the sincere heart, will not be rejected by Allah. So don't forget to pray for them. Do I answer your question correctly, sister? 
Do I answer the, the question correctly, please? Yes, sir. Thank you Zakallah. very much. Zakallah khair. And one again a, a bit. The sister, please, when you want to do something amal ma'ruf nahi munkar, do it together in a team with the jama'ah. The sisters will always get close to each other. You must always remember that all of you is like a family. If one of the sisters is having a problem, don't just leave it to her. And parent, please, parent, you must remember, your daughter is still your daughter. You must give them protection. When they are oppressed by their husband, if their husband commits zulm on them, you have all the right to come in and interfere in the family problem. Please remember, father. Don't think that, oh, now I've given my daughter to the, to the, to the man to marry her. Now I have no responsibility. You still have a responsibility. If your daughter is being oppressed, is being beaten by the husband, go in and give a helping hand. Tell the man he has no right to do that. If the man still stubborn, take your daughter back. Free one I have seen with my own eye. You don't allow the sister to go to the mosque and pray. Now, Zubillah, don't do that anymore. The Prophet forbid you to do that. Any woman who want to come to the house of worship to perform prayer, allow them. Don't allow your tradition to overrule the religion. Number one. Number two, when you're performing Salatul Janazah. You know Salatul Janazah? Brother, do you know what is Salatul Janazah? I don't hear the brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is Salatul Janazah? Funeral prayer. Sister, when somebody passed away in your community, do you pay the, them a visit? Do you pay them a visit, sister? When somebody passed away in your community, do you pay them a visit? Yes. What do you do after paying them a visit? What do you do? Do you participate in performing the salah to janazah? You forget your responsibility. Hakul Muslim, Allah Muslim, Sittun. There are six responsibility among fellow Muslim. One of it, if somebody pass away, you should at least perform a prayer for them. And the Prophet have said, whoever perform one salat for the janazah, he get one qirat. One qirat is a reward of the mouth of Uhud in Medina. The Prophet never said that women cannot perform salat janazah. The more people who perform salat janazah for the disease, yeah, you will be reward and the disease also will be reward by Allah. We will be very blessed if a lot of Muslims come to our funeral and then they perform prayer on us. But most of the time, the man is the one who engaged in the Salat to Janazah. But you never, never encourage the woman to do Salat to Janazah. Have you been performing Salat to Janazah, sister? Have you been performing Salat to Janazah, sister? I don't hear you. Say it again. No, you see? You hear it, brother? They don't even know how to perform Salat al-Janazah because we have been very unjust to them. We stopped them from participating yeah, in the Salat al-Janazah. As though as they have no right to perform Salat al-Janazah. May the Prophet encourage every Muslim to perform Salat al-Janazah. May Allah give you your freedom, sis. May Allah strengthen your iman. Don't forget your right. And may your husband become your protector. Inshallah. Faddam. The gentleman in the front. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum My salam name is Afaz Muhammad and I am running a business in Mumbai. I want to ask you, sir, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has alayhi said alayhi. that my ummah will divide it into 73 groups and only one group is, will go in Jannah. I want to ask you that 72 groups who will go in Jahannam, they will remain, live there or they will go in Jannah after the punishment? Zakallahu khair. Now we know that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did say, "Kullu ummati yadkhulun, kullu ummati yadkhulul jannah illa man aba." Fakal, "O my Aba, ya Rasulullah, fakal man ata'ani dakhla jannah, wa man asani fakad aba." The Prophet said, "All my ummah will enter paradise. All my ummah." But the hadith that you are talking about, the Prophet said, "My ummah will be divided to seventy-three." 73 more than the Yahud and the Nasara and then the Prophet said only one will enter paradise the first hadith he said all my ummah will enter now this hadith said 73 groups 
72 will go to hell, one go to Jannah. And then the companion, they ask the prophet. They want to make sure where they stand. Which group that will go to Jannah? The prophet said, Ma ana alay wa ashabi, whoever follow my way and the way of my companions, not the way of anybody. My way and the way of my companion because they are the best generation. Karunas karni, the prophet said, the best generation is the generation in the time of the prophet sallam. Summa lazina yalunahum, summa lazina yalunahum. Then the second generation and the third generation. We I do not know which which. Maybe when you're 50 or 60 generation now. So we are not under the category. Now, coming back to your question, when you become a Muslim, you may commit sin. You may follow the wrong way. Maybe because you are ignorant, may Allah forgive you. Maybe because of your stubbornness, may Allah open your heart. But if you do not commit shirk, then the Prophet said yes. After you commit your sin, you go to Jahannam, then Allah will forgive you and He will put you into paradise. Yes, the Prophet said, why? Because you have Iman. That is the only thing that saves us from hell fire, is our Iman. The Prophet said, La tatkhuloon al Jannah hatta tu'minu. None of us can enter paradise that belongs to Allah until He believes. Wala tu'minu hatta tahabu. None of us can be a true believer until you love each other. That's why I want you to love each other, brother and sister. Yeah, I want you to say to your friend, I love you, I love you. Can you say it again, brother and sister? I love you. I love you. Alhamdulillah. Naam. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the last question of the evening. Gentlemen in the back, please state your name and profession. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as Muhammad Dulal. Come from Bangladesh. I'm a professional journalist. My question are you know from our media, our most of the people, most of the leader of our country are Muslim. Now in this time, the corruption and corrupted is burning course in our country. It is great problem in our country. So please tell us what is the proper way from remove this problem. Thanks. Can you repeat the question? What is the question again? Could you please repeat the question? Corrupted. Our most of the people and uh, in our country, our administration are corrupted. Corruption. Corruption. Corrupted. Yes. How do we corrupt corruption? Brother and sister in Islam, I think inshallah you, we are so blessed today because you have with us our uh, former ex-prime minister of Malaysia uh, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim with you all tonight and he may be able to explain to you all better about that yeah? so we hope you have the patience to be with him this night inshallah yeah? he is here now inside with us yeah? uh, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim is here and inshallah I believe that he will be a better person to enlighten you on that matter about corruption yeah? because uh, we, we are very poor people we do not know anything about corruption <laughs> Jazakallah khair for your patience. May Allah bless us. Subhanaka. It's finished now. Question. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa atubu ilayk. Fellow brother and sister, on the behalf of our, me and my, my wife, we would like to thank all the, especially the organizing committee of this conference. And we will hope that all of you don't forget. Don't forget to join hand to hand and make sure that Peace TV and IRF will grow. We'll be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't forget to pray for us. We need also your prayer. Me, myself, need a lot of prayer for all of you because most of my sibling, my sister, and my brother, they are still not yet a Muslim. Just don't forget to pray for us and we will not forget to pray for you. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.